carry out uh, training all over the training facilities of the international partners of the space station. Uh, Europe, Canada, Japan, Russia and the United States. Here in the United States we do carry out training for specifically for the U.S. Uh, laboratory. All the U.S. facilities that are inside that laboratory and also we do the general training that pertain, for example, emergencies and other situations that uh, uh, entitle the crew to work together and uh, carry out uh, um, uh, maneuvers to uh, respond to these emergency situations. One of these emergency situations is also has to do with medical situation. Of course, now we, you have to think that we are in station and you know, if something breaks, uh, it's not that you can call the plumber or the electrician or the doctor. So each one of us is trained to uh, make sure they can respond in this kind of emergency situation. So we have some people on board that as professional engineers, uh, but they are trained like, uh, uh, I would not say medical doctor, but they're trained like people that are able to respond to emergency situation, often in contact with ground, so they're able to uh, recognize certain uh, certain specific uh, uh, dangerous situation and respond giving uh, uh, medicine or, or reacting to stabilize the person if the situation goes really really uh, bad we can all jump into the Soyuz spacecraft and return to earth in a few hours but you know we try first to stabilize the person and do this only in extreme case of uh, emergency we meet here, uh, we discuss those uh, dangerous situations, for example, fire or depressurization or uh, contamination of the station. And we do go through our procedures, with our, which are very, fairly complex, and, uh, and practice uh, how to respond to this uh, situation. Uh, part of the crew goes into the Soyuz, part start fighting the fire, somebody has checked the status of the station, uh, somebody has talked to ground. We need to make sure that all these roles that are very important are done properly in order to respond in a proper way to the situation. The activities that we get trained in Houston are uh, activities that have to do with systems, uh, uh, for example, uh, robotics arm operation, uh, in particular, in my case, for example, I am uh, uh, part of the team that will uh, grapple uh, the HTV, the Japanese uh, cargo vehicle. These vehicles don't dock to the station, but they stop about 10 meters from the station, and we have to go and grapple them with the arm and bring them up. The Virtual Reality Lab is a special lab that is able essentially to place us in space and uh, kind of uh, simulate what would happen in certain special situations. For example, if you're doing a spacewalk and suddenly you would be thrown off to the station and you are tumbling in space. This is a, this is a possibility, it could happen for a certain series of reasons. And, but we don't have a way to train it on, on ground more than going to the virtual reality lab where you actually don a special set of uh, goggles and then you see the station and uh, the simulators uh, essentially it's like you are thrown off of the station and stumbling so you see everything tumbling and then uh, you, are, you start uh, after usually after 30 seconds of tumbling you start your automatic responses which is to uh, uh, activate uh, a special equipment that will actually stop you from tumbling and then using a joystick you can point toward the space station and use the gas that is stored in the backpack to put you back on station. It's not so simple because there is not that much gas, the autonomy is very limited, uh, there is uh, usually just enough gas to put you back on the station, but you have to be fairly precise because you can give some few correction and sometimes uh, some of the situations we have are very complicated and we just miss the station, maybe just for a few inches or centimeters, but if you miss the station, you miss it. Uh, so we train to be able to overcome this kind of situation and the virtual reality lab is the perfect place for doing this.
GCTC, uh, the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, it's a, a training center created in the 60s for the training of the cosmonauts. Uh, it was uh, originally a super secret uh, Russian military base located about 30 kilometers outside Moscow in a forest. Still has this function of training all the Russian cosmonauts to fly the uh, Soyuz, uh, the Russian uh, spacecraft, and also trains uh, the international astronauts, Americans, Europeans, Japanese, Canadian, for flying on the space station. In the last uh, three months, we did integrated uh, training with the whole crew sitting in simulator, like this one that we have here in our background and uh, playing like we would be in space. Uh, we have to be proficient in launch, in uh, rendezvous, in docking to the station, and then of course in uh, re-entry. Uh, the final stage of the, of the certification of the crew is what is called the examination, the final examination. So for each one of these training phases, we do carry out a complex uh, simulation and uh, there is a, uh, the instructor put together a series of malfunctions. We don't know which malfunctions we are going to get. We do also exams for what concerns the uh, Russian part of the space station. We did a full day simulation. So we, we simulated the standard day, a standard day in space uh, with three people as a crew. Uh, we did uh, get several uh, malfunctions on some of the equipments. We had to solve this equipment, talk to the ground, find the solution. As soon as you see the uh, signal that says uh, at, uh, atmosphere contamination, the first thing you, you do, you take the mask and put it on because you don't want to breathe the atmosphere. Then if you see instead, you hear the tone that there is a fire, then you immediately go and start doing the operations there. So these are, these are tasks that you do personal. But then you start working as a crew because the crew has to respond to this uh, emergency. We are trained so that we look for each other, we take procedures, somebody reads the step and somebody does the step, somebody talks to the ground. So each one of us has to learn how to cope with the situation. And uh, at the end of the exam, a big commission composed of all senior astronauts, the head of Star City, the head of the astronaut corps, all the instructors, all the people that are uh, uh, the designer of the system sits together, see how the crew has uh, behaved and responded to the various malfunctions and decide if the crew is ready to fly in space or not. EAC, European Astronaut Center, it's an ESA facility located in Cologne, Germany. It's the home base of the European astronaut. It's where the astronaut have their house. It has uh, offices, uh, the structure to maintain the activity of, of the astronaut, but also uh, the facilities to train for the European module and payloads on board of the station. Uh, once uh, we are assigned on to a mission, uh, we do come here to train for uh, uh, the systems that have to do with European uh, hardware. For example, the European Laboratory Columbus, the European uh, Automated Transport Vehicle ATV, and other European uh, payloads. What uh, we've been doing this week uh, is a specific training on uh, the ATV uh, for being able to uh, go in space and work with, uh, with the system and, uh, for example, uh, commission the system, which means receiving it once uh, it arrives on the station, opening the hatch, uh, assemble the payloads, uh, check out all the systems, prepare in case of uh, any malfunctions, and then uh, finally close it out and let it go for re-entry into uh, Earth. We do turn off everything that is not necessary for this operation. Not only that, we kind of cannibalize the, uh, the module itself. For example, there are two uh, smoke sensors, mask, fire extinguishers. Uh, we bring them there on, uh, on back on station to be used for the next ATV. Uh, and uh, last but not least, we remove also all the lights because of course uh, there's nobody inside the TV and we don't really need the lights once it's, uh, the hatch is closed. And so we have spare parts for, for the station. Mm -hmm.